real people kind of reaction. Besides, who says your mom has to know? <laughs> Arthur, you do not smell anything, because there's nothing in the box for you to smell, okay? Well, friend, I gotta see you. I got something I gotta say to you. Oh. If you need me, I'll be there. I need you to get here as fast as you can. I have some good things for dinner tonight. Cookie! younger, the world seemed very simple. That was last year. Now that I'm 16, things seem a lot more confused and complicated. When I ask Grandpa why, he says because people are in charge of things, and it's the same old model, year after year. And the process of making new ones is handled by amateurs. I'd do it for you. You know I would. I don't know that at all. I'll swear and spit and cross my heart if you want me to. Well, why would I want you to do that? Because whenever a person swears and spits and crosses their heart, it means their body will fall off if they're not telling the truth. My dad said, I swear <clears throat> that if Molly Witherspoon had a rat and had to go to Cleveland for a week like me, I'd take care of her rat for her. <laughs> My mom never gave me permission to have a rat in the house. Never. But Pookie's not a regular rat. He's a real people kind of rat. Besides, who says your mom has to know? You'd tell your mom, wouldn't you? Not if I was helping my very best friend in the world, I wouldn't. I swear spit and cross my heart. You're gonna wind up with chapped palms. Another letter to the editor? Yep. Why do you write those things all the time? I mean, they never do you any good. They do me good, son. They get it off my chest. It makes me feel better. What are you complaining about this time? Stoplight over on Monroe Street. They don't need it. Public safety is more important than any inconvenience that may be involved. Are you trying to pick an argument? Yeah. Isn't it great? I'm on the debating team with Dylan. He and I have to practice taking any side of any argument and be able to make a case for it. So? If I was in favor of the stoplight, you'd be against it. That's right. I see. Chris. Come on. Through there, officer. topic or an issue. And Dylan and I, we have to argue one side of it. How about this? Resolved. Debating is foolishness. I can argue that. Doesn't matter what it is. It can be anything. Well, Grandpa, what do you know about rats? Most of the time they sign with the Raiders. Christine, Elizabeth Witherspoon, you are acting like... Three names. I knew it. I beg your pardon, miss. A lecture. Whenever you use three names, I know there's a lecture coming on. You are acting like a child, Chris. I'm not acting like a child. I'm acting like an adolescent. Well, I am adolescent. So what are you all been out of shape about? 
You are this close without even going to that dance, miss. Now, I suggest you take your smart mouth and store it, because I am up to here with your attitude. Mom, you can't go shopping with me tomorrow for my dress. I understand that. You have to work, and it's important. I understand that. What I don't understand is why you just don't give me the money and let me go by myself. Because you've never bought a dress like this on your own. And there is a fair amount of money involved in it. And if you say, trust me, Mom, one more time, I will scream down the walls. Mom, I have to have a dress this week. I have exams all next week, and if the dress needs any altering, it won't be ready in time for the dance. What about tomorrow? Grandpa would love to take you shopping for that dress. Grandpa? Oh, you got to be kidding. His idea is sexy is a suit of armor. I didn't know you were looking for a sexy dress, Chris. Well, nothing out of line. I thought I'd look around and see what they had in strapless. Well, I would certainly trust your grandfather's judgment in this matter. He'll just say no. Then I trust him. Uh, you're going to sit right there because it's almost impossible to write this if you do. I'll bet. Thus, you'll never guess what I just heard. I believe anything, pal. I'm living here on a freeway. There is a rumor that the Chargers are going to make a big trade. I don't know what the trade is, but a big trade. That'll be something, huh? <laughs> Mr. Gaplin? What? Do you think it's right to have drug testing on professional athletes? I do, David. Yes, I do. I don't. It's an invasion of privacy. Mr. Kaplan, what do you know about rats? They happen to be the favorite meal of ball constrictors. I'm afraid that's all I know on that topic, Molly. David, it's the only way to save professional sports. What's this? The only way, David. I I'm going to go get a haircut. You want okay. it with me, Joe? Yeah, 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 yeah. Is that it? That's, uh, 14 Ashton Street? That's it. Keep the meter running. I'm not sure I want to get out yet. Getting cold feet? There must be a girl involved. Uh, it's no girl. It's just family. the meter off. anything because there's nothing in the box for you to smell okay just relax go on hi candy face hi what you got in the box a rat a rat <laughs> Now, if you're a door-to-door -door salesman, you've come to the wrong house. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm not a door-to-door -door salesman. I can assure you of that. All right. How can I help you? Uh, well, you probably can't help me at all, but that man right over there can. Gus? This young fellow wants to see you. What can I do for you, young fellow? Your name Witherspoon? Yep. And you spent time in a Veterans Administration Hospital in 1962? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I did. And now you're one up on me. Now, who are you? I'm your son. <laughs> well, 
I've got something to do. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> okay. Young fella, you're not my son. That's number one. But I'd be happy to hear what's on your mind. You were a Marine, right? I was. And you spent time in a VA hospital in 1962, San Antonio. Right again. My mother was a nurse in that hospital. Now, you and she must have had a, a relationship, and nine months later, I came into the world. It, it was a long time ago. I guess you probably don't remember it. I would have remembered. Look, before my mom died, she gave me this address, and she gave me this letter to be delivered to you. Now, this is the last address she has on my dad 25 years ago. She said he was a husky, gung-ho marine type about your age. Could tell a war story that would make your ears drop off with battle fatigue. Come on in the house, kid. I can help you. Fine, sir. And you? Oh, boy, I haven't felt better since a furlough I took in Taipan about 1971. Let me tell you about that one. Well, old friend, I got to see you. I got something I got to say to you, and I got to do it here. Well, sure. Are you, are you all right? Sure, I'm fine. I'm, uh, I'm just fine. But I do need to see you. I need you to get here as fast as you can. Well, if you need me, I'll be there. Uh, is tomorrow early enough? All right. It'll be good to see you, old buddy. And you. All right. Bye-bye. I guess you can stay on the couch there for tonight. I'll get you a blanket. the dressing room. If you want, you can leave your credit card here and look at some men's clothes or fishing rods or something. There's a nice coffee shop on the third floor. Is there? Well, if it's all right with you, I'll just keep my credit card in my pocket, and I'm going to stay pretty close by. Grandpa, I have good taste. You don't have to worry. I'm not at all worried about your taste, my dear. Yes, sir. It's, uh, this guy, J.J. Moon. This fellow is coming over later. He's who you want to talk about, right? Right. I figure you ought to know something about him before he gets here. Are you real sure he's my father? Of course not. I'm not sure of anything. But there are some things about him you might want to know. For instance, he's, he's not too easy to get to know. But he's been my friend for a long, long time. And he will be for life. It sounds like you guys are real close. Real close. I've always been able to count on him. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If he's the one, I don't think my mom shares the same fond memories for him. They were together for a short while, and she found out she was pregnant. He'd already left town. Well, he don't put down roots too easy. But you got to remember, 
You're coming at him from his blind side. I don't know what you want. I don't know what you're I, after. I, I just want to know. You know, I'm not some kid looking for his teddy bear. I, I want to meet my father, you know? Grandpa? What do you think? I mean, isn't it outrageous? Very becoming. It is outrageous, and it worries me. But I can get it, can't I? Over my dead body. Grandpa, that's not fair. Well, it's not fair to some hormone-crazed young kid trying to dance with you, either. Get it off. MC 1127402. Retired, sir. Moon, John Jeremy, 3022401. Sergeant, retired. Stand easy, Corporal. Smoke them if you got them. <laughs> Good to see you, old Welcome, rascal. welcome, welcome. Gus, I'd like you to meet Melinda. I've heard so much about you. May I offer my congratulations and my sympathy? <laughs> I can handle it, Mr. Witherspoon. Well, come in, then. Come in, come in. Give me this. Give me this. In you go. Jesse! I'm coming. Oh. Jesse! Oh, JJ, hello. Oh, it's good to see you. And Mrs. JJ Moon. Oh, my. It's my daughter in law, Jess Witherspoon. Hi. How do you do? I hope you know what you've gotten into marrying this rascal. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, you. Oh, my, my. Look, I know you've had a long trip. Uh, can I get you a cold drink? I'd love some water. Okay, well, then we'll go in the kitchen and get that. Maybe Amanda enjoy her marine gossip, huh? Uh, well, in the core, you see, we call that scuttlebutt. Okay, well, I want the scuttlebutt on how you got him to the altar. <laughs> <laughs> well, come in. No, no, just a minute. Just a minute. Now, just tell me this. Are you all right? Sure. You're sure? I'm all right. But there's a fellow here I want you to meet. Douglas! Well, who might this be? Melinda, are you all right? Um, yes, I'll be fine. Oh, I just have to sit down and let my stomach calm. All right, well, that's probably just motion sickness from the car, huh? No, it's, it's, it's not motion sickness. Actually, it's pretty standard, I'm told. So if I'm in the john for a few minutes in the morning, you'll be patient, okay? Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> J.J. doesn't know yet. I just thought it would be so great to tell him when he's with his old buddy, Gus. No. No, no way. I don't care what some woman said about a little heavy romancing For over 20 years ago. Hey, that's my mother. That doesn't mean I'm your father. You calm down a minute let this fellow explain to you. Just wait just one minute, sir. Now, I've been all over the world. You know that. I've had a lot of flings. And who knows? Maybe this young fellow is my son. But maybe he's not. Do you ever think of that possibility? I'll tell you one thing that is not in my future, sir, and that is fatherhood. So good luck to you, kid. But don't come camping on my doorstep, because I'm nobody's father, now or ever. Is that Mr. Moon's car up front? It is, sir. How do you and Douglas hit it off? Well, I think the hitting's about over for a while, anyway. They're kind of in neutral corners. Maybe they need somebody like you to debate it for them, you ever think? I don't think I'd be very good at it today. Oh? What's the trouble? You picked the topic today. 
Yeah. Dropping the A-bomb on Hiroshima was justified under the circumstances. Yeah. No matter how we go at it, it stinks. You all right? No. Listen, if you're worried about that boy, Douglas, even if he is my son, that happened a long time before I met you. Yeah. Well, what you did or didn't do before we met is not what concerns me. It's what you did downstairs that scares me. What's that? Instead of acknowledging that Douglas might be your son, you just ran like a scared rabbit. Oh, I did not yes, run. Yes, you did, J.J. Not in the literal sense, maybe, but you ran. Just... I'm just not used to being around kids. It's, it's not that I don't like them. Matter of fact, I've, I've gotten very fond of Gus's grandchildren. I see. When it comes to your own kids. Let's, let's face it. I'm just not cut out to be a father. Maybe that's where you're wrong. Well, what's that supposed to mean? You are going to be a father. Whether you like it or not. You're pregnant? <laughs> I can see you're really overjoyed. Well, of course I'm overjoyed. No, J.J., you're not a very good liar. I had it all planned. We would go to that restaurant up on the hill that we like so much with the beautiful view. And when I told you, you would get all choked up and shy. And then we'd toast the new arrival. And you'd come over and you'd give me a big hug. No. That was what I dreamed. But I'm... I'm finding out that reality is a whole lot different. <laughs> They're careful there, my girl. Don't worry, I won't break anything. There's a mouse trap in there, and if it pops, it'll hurt your hand. Mouse trap? Yep. There's a mouse in the house. How can you tell? I know. And I set those traps in there. I figure I'll catch him where he eats. Grandpa, you have to take that trap away. Why? It's not a mouse. It's a rat. Oh, it's a rat. A rat? A pet rat. And his name is Pookie. Pookie, huh? And he belongs to Bertha. Your mother know about Pookie? I told her when I brought him home. Well, did you tell her you were going to give him the run of the house? No. Maybe you better, huh? I'll get the traps. Okay. She's not going to like it. Honey, I don't like it. Oh. Excuse me. Got any rope? The uh, latch on this thing's all busted. Just a minute. Looks like you might be going somewhere, young fellow. Uh, yeah, I am. I'm gonna go back home. The uh, bus leaves about a half hour. Well, yeah, I got some rope. Out in the garage. Come on. I'm sorry the way this worked out here. Oh, no sweat. My mom wanted me to deliver that letter to my dad. That's just what I did. And that's it, huh? That's all there is to it? That's all there was for him. Maybe you expect too much of him, kid. I didn't expect him. I tell you, he ain't too bad a guy, you know. You get to know him. Sound just like my mother. She always used to say, don't make snap judgments about people. Why do it then? What the heck? Why don't you stick around a couple of days? Get to know this guy a little better. How do you get to know someone who doesn't want anything to do with you? I don't know, kid. I'll tell you something. If I had my pick, I think I would have chosen you. Thank you. Take care. 
care of yourself. Gus, I need to talk to you, my friend. Well, good it's me, isn't it? The other fellow just left. Who's that? Your boy, J.J. Your boy just walked out the driveway carrying a suitcase. Said he was going to the bus station. My boy. Some son just leaves without even saying goodbye to me? Said goodbye to me. I guess he figured you didn't care. You don't, do you? You should, though. Should? See, when people start saying should, it makes me a little bit nervous. Sermons usually begin with should. And some warnings. Gonna give you one, my friend. You know, I had a son walk out of my life. And it hurts. I would hope you wouldn't have to learn that firsthand, but maybe you do. I just don't know, Gus. I don't know. A little confused, huh? Now that you know you've got a son. No, it's not about the son. It's not about the son. You see, Melinda just told me she's pregnant. <laughs> I see. Well, are you going to deny this baby, too? What, are you crazy? Of course not. Of course not. That's, uh, that's my own flesh and blood. So is that boy there. And you're trying to weasel out on this, my friend, and it just don't wash with me. You're missing out, you know. Missing out on what? Your son. Your son, you numbskull. If my son was so all fired important, why did it take 20 years? Nobody said a word. And now all of a sudden he's here. You wouldn't have showed up, J.J. You'd have cut and run just like you're trying to do now, and you know it. You're no kid anymore. You're not a young boy in the Marines. You're not off on some wild adventure. You've got responsibilities now, and it's high time you lived up to them. <clears throat> Listen, Gus, I... Help me out. What should I do, Gus? I don't know. You see, I can't tell you what to do. I don't know your answers, but I think you do. What I can do, my friend, is stand right beside you while you figure them out. I do know this. The young man that just walked out of my driveway carrying a suitcase was really hurt. gone a long time. I've known J.J. to take over two hours just to say hello. <laughs> you know, it's true. He's probably, uh, but probably out now. shooting the breeze somewhere, and he's lost track of time. Uh, Gus, it's me, J.J. It's him. Oh. <laughs> yeah, where are you? I'm in jail, that's where. Hold the thought, my friend. I'm going to the other phone. Would you hang this up when I get in there, please? Sure. Thank you, Jesse. Now then, sir, do you want to run that by me again? I'm in jail, Gus. What more is there to say? How'd you get there? Oh, well, it was because of some woman. Well, some dame started butting into our conversation. I told her to butt out, and 
First thing you know, her husband was taking a swing at me. I see. Are you all right? Are you hurt? Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. Can you come down here and bail me out, please? Where's Douglas? Oh, he's here. He, he got in the same scuffle with me. <laughs> you know, that boy's about as stubborn as a mule, and he's got a natural left hook. <laughs> How long will it take you to get here? Look, I'll get there as soon as I can, my friend. Did you patch things up with the boy? Well, um, that's going to take some time, Gus. I'm going to have to uh, clean up a little bit. Going to have to drive clear across town. Then I'm going to have to find some place to raise bail money. The bank's not open. I tell you, that could take me a while. Well, now, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You can't leave me in here all night. I mean, in these places, you get some kind of terrible disease. I get, I get claustrophobia or something like that. <laughs> well, do the best you can. One thing about it, my friend, this time you won't be alone. You'll have company. Well, now, wait, wait. wait. Just, just remember Guadalcanal and the foxhole and all that. Oh, I remember all about it. Now, you take care of yourself, you hear? Just wait, wait, wait. If you can't count on your friends, who can you count on? You ever think of a good lawyer? I don't know any good lawyers. The only lawyers I know are crooks. It's all how you look at it. This is humiliating. So your old buddy Gus isn't going to bail us out, huh? No. No, he went AWOL on me. Not too much fun when it happens to you, is it? No. Now, you hold on there. I didn't go AWOL on you. I never knew you existed. Well, you do now, don't you? Oh, forget it. I'm the one taking the hike this time. Well, that's just fine with me. Just curl yourself up in your little corner there and whimper away. Handled yourself pretty good in that scuffle. My mom taught me a few things. Your mom was quite a woman. You remember my mom? Remember, of course I remember. Your mom was an angel. And she was a veritable vision. She had this wonderful, calm and serene nature. It was just great for an old soldier boy like myself. We got... We... I'm not going to con you, kid. I just barely remember her. But, but, but you see, that was over a quarter of a century ago. That was a long time. How could you say she was quite a woman? You want the truth? I was thinking about the way she brought you up. She must have been special. Wasn't easy. Well, she had a commitment. Which is something I've never had in my life. Oh, of course, I was committed to the core. But lately, I've been wondering if I was just committed to the core or if I was just using that to get out of all the hassles of life. Gus says I've been chickening out. Well, I didn't chicken out on the battlefield. I know that. I'd hate to think that I've been doing that every day of my life. I want you to look in my bedroom closet one more time. If that animal's in there, I want to know about it. Mom, I already checked once, and so did Arthur. Well, check again, please. Oh, hi, Gus. Uh, hi. Melinda is in the shower. She ought to be out in about 20 minutes. Morning. Oh, I'll get Morning. it. Have you noticed that Arthur doesn't seem that hungry lately? <laughs> no, it's kind of like he said one really big meal. <laughs> Arthur doesn't eat rats. He eats lots of other stuff. So do you. <laughs> Mom, I'm going to go check in your closet. I mean, first is coming home in two days, and if I don't find Pookie, I'll die. That makes two of us, miss. David, the smarter half of your debate team is here. Oh, boy, I've got a problem. He wants out of the debate. Mom, are you ready? Ready? Come on, it's Saturday morning. You gonna get that dress? 
we're going to look. In other words, you're going to go get it, huh? No. We're going to look at tasteful, decent, ladylike dresses. Show your mom the ones I picked out. They're pretty. I will, Grandpa. Bye. Mm. Bye. Mom, may I drive the car? Yes, you may, but I will back it out of the driveway. Better go. See you guys. Bye. Grandpa? Yep. Do you think you can get uh, Dylan to change his mind? Just debate stuff. Real important to you, isn't it? Yeah. It's extra credit in English. It could get me from a C plus to a B plus. Trot him in here, kid. Maybe I can help. I'll take a run at him. Yeah. Grandpa, this is Dylan. How do you do, young fella? Nice to meet you, Mr. Witherspoon. Nice to meet you. Okay. Refresh my memory. What's the topic? Resolve. Dropping the A-bomb in Hiroshima was justified. And you don't want to debate that, do you? No, sir. You lose people over there? My great-grandfather. Everybody loses somebody they love in a war, don't they? Maybe you ought to debate the value of the war. But I agree with one thing. I don't think your teacher ought to make you debate that. Might be a little too close to you. Well, Grandpa, the teacher doesn't know. The topics were picked out of a hat. How about this? Resolved. A debate is just a debate, a simple exercise, and certainly not worth hurting anybody for. And you can practice that one on me and Joel Kaplan. OK. Well, I guess so. But, Grandpa, we could have won the trophy. You can get trophies at a pawn shop, kid. Good friends are too hard to come by. Which reminds me, that's why I got to get down to the jail. Nice to meet you. Your grandfather's got friends in jail? Yeah, isn't that rad? You ready, Mom? Ready as I'll ever be, I suppose. What do you think? Oh, my. Turn around. You were right. About what? You are beautiful. Really? Oh. I guess you better have it. Oh, thanks, Mom. <laughs> Easy. Hit wrinkle before we get it home. I think my pumps with the satin bows would be really hot with this. Don't forget the shawl. The shawl? The handmade black lace shawl your grandma gave me. It'll be great with that. Do you mean on the shoulder shawl? You do want the dress, don't you? Oh, well, yeah. I think grandma's shawl will look very nice with this. Thank you. Yes, sir. Well, it's about time you got here. Well, good morning to you, too, sir. And did you sleep good? Well, now, I got a right to be peeved. You know that. Have you? Stick around, big shot. It ain't over yet. What do you mean? I'm not going to get you out of here, J.J. Going to get him out. But I'm going to let you cool your heels for a couple of days. Maybe three. Till your hearing comes up. He's going to stay in here for three days? Give or take. I suppose you don't remember all the times I yanked your backside out of trouble. I remember. I remember all the times you got me in trouble, too, my friend. Well, now, come on, Corporal. Semper Fi. Semper Fi, huh? Don't work this time, J.J. That song and dance got old. Well, you're not serious, are you? I'm dead serious. See, one of you in there is trying to do the right thing. The other's trying to cut and run and weasel out once again. J.J., all the kid wanted was to meet his father for crying out loud. Now, you tell me, who would you bail out? I'll get the papers, kid. No, wait a minute. Forget it. Excuse me? That doesn't work. He's the one you ought to spring here. 
I'm on my own. He's got a wife. He's got a kid on the way. He's the one with the family. Bail him out. Is that right, JJ? Are you the one with the family? This kid has no family? Look him in the eye and say, kid, you have no family. I'll get you both out and we'll all go home. Oh, listen, kid. Me being out of your life is the best thing that could ever happen to you. <laughs> I'd be a lousy father. I talk too much. And when I get scared, <laughs> I start yelling and screaming. Gus will tell you that. What are you so scared about? Oh, son. I'd be the... I'd be the worst father you could ever have. be the only father I ever had, so... I guess you'd also be the best. Give it some time, my friend. Give it some time. She stopped to get some pizza. She'd be home in about a half an hour. All right. Well, they don't make them like they used to. I guess they learned their lesson. Oh, Gus, it's so sad. You're telling me, Jesse. Look, I know this may not be your cup of tea, but it certainly is mine. I need to speak to you. Can it wait? It can't. Jesse? Oh, Gus, please. I don't interrupt your card games. Don't interrupt my old movie. Okay. Suit yourself. There's a rat asleep by you there on the couch. Now, stay tuned for Encounters with the Unexplained, next on PAX-TV.